Hi, in this lesson we will be seeing the architecture of application tier. First we will be seeing the overview of the application tier architecture. Then we will be seeing the architecture of the application type for release 12.2. After that we will be seeing the architecture for release 12.1. First let us see what is application tier. The application tier is also called as the middle tier. Because the main purpose of the application tier is to ensure that the, the communication between the desktop tier that is a client tier and the database tier is always maintained properly. And the actual business logic which is related to the application runs on the application tier. And this business logic is maintained or run by using the servers that are running on the application tier. For example, the web server or the managed servers which are related to forms for example or even concurrent processing server so all these servers together they provide the facility to run the business logic on the application tier we have in the previous lessons we have seen already that there are two types of applications or two types of requests that are basically processed or served by application tier one is the html based applications such as the JSP pages or OAF pages for example or forms, forms requests. So these are the general type of requests which are requested by the end user and it is a responsibility of the middle tier or the application tier to process to accept these requests to process the request and send back the required output to the end user. Now there is something called concurrent processing server and the responsibility of the concurrent processing server is to run ad hoc reports in the background. So now these are different servers which are there in the application tier. So now let us see how the application tier release 12.2 actually works. The application tier release 12.2 is based on Fusion Middleware 11G. And as you would know, Fusion Middleware 11G is basically something which is which consists of the WebLogic Server 11G. The WebLogic Server 11G means it is version 10.3.6. So 10.3.6 WebLogic Server. Now, in the Fusion Middleware, there are two important components. One is the HTTP server which is based on Apache basically and there is something called eBusiness Suite WebLogic Domain. The eBusiness Suite WebLogic Domain contains admin server and three managed servers. The responsibility of three managed servers is to serve the related request. For example, the WebLogic managed server WSOA Core, the responsibility of this managed server is to accept the requests which are related to HTML based applications such as JSP requests or OAF page requests. And these requests are served by the OA core managed server. Similarly, the forms requests are actually handled by the managed server that is WebLogic managed server forms that is WLS forms. Similarly, OAFM is basically required for the web services. So based on the purpose or based on the type of request that is received by the application tier, these managed servers which are related to the EBS WebLogic domain will receive the request, process the request and send back the required output to the end user. Now there is also something called actually 1012 Oracle Home. This 1012 Oracle Home is nothing but the application server 1012. The application server 1012 is basically a product home for Oracle forms and reports. So what happens basically is this specific Oracle Home provides the eBusiness Suite forms application in the form of forms app.er file. And this one is deployed onto the managed server that is WLS forms. And this managed server when invoked, when a specific user request is being served by this managed server, it basically runs the executable called frmweb from the 1012 Oracle Home. So let's try to have a look at the flow once again. Let's say for example there is an end user who is requesting a form. The request basically comes through the HTTP server to the form server and form server in the sense basically forms managed server. 
And the forms manage server, what it does is it will go to the 101 to Oracle home to execute the FRM web process. And for each of the end user requests, FRM web process is basically created on the operating system of the application tier. And the end user requests are basically served by this FRM web process. So this FRM web executable, as I told, is located in the 1012 Oracle home. Remember one important point, you will have to basically separate the request into two parts. As I told before, one is HTML based replications, that is JSP pages and OFE pages, OAF pages and second is forms. Now, the initial requests are basically going to become, going to be accepted by the HTTP server which runs on Apache and then the requests are basically forwarded to the managed servers of the web logic. So this is how the architecture of 12.2 stands out. But a very very important thing you need to understand here is what are the components of the application type here. The first important component is Fusion Middleware 11G and there is a domain called EBS domain and the EBS domain has the manage, it has the admin server and three managed servers basically. And then there is 101 to Oracle home, which is basically the product home for Oracle forms and reports. So this is how the 12.2 application tier works. As I told before, the web logic basically has a domain called EBS domain. The FusionMail LG has a web logic domain called EBS domain and it has basically all these servers, managed servers. So from the console of the weblogic admin server, you can basically check all the servers, you can start and stop these servers as well. Of course, there are some additional scripts from the OS level also, which you can use to stop and start these services. But from the console also, you can stop and start all these managed servers. Now let us have a look how the architecture of 12.1 works. Remember that the 12.2 is obviously the latest version that is available in the e-delivery website or all the customers which are recently implemented in the last 5 to 7 years would have implemented only EBS 12.2. So there is a less chance that old customers are still using 12.1. So if the customer is using 12.1, you will be required to understand how the 12.1 architecture also works. So we have seen previously in release 12.2 that there are two important products. One is Fusion Middleware 11G and Oracle Application Server 1012. The Oracle Application Server 1012 is the same product that is there even in release 12.1, which has basically the forms app.er file. But to deploy this one, we'll be requiring some container for Java. And in the 12.2, we use managed server. That is because basically we have a Fusion Middleware 11G, so we use a weblogic domain in release 12.2. But in release 12.1, what we have is Oracle application server, a older version of the middleware basically you can say. And this Oracle application server, IAS basically, is a 1013 Oracle home, which runs your HTTP server or the web server basically, which, based on, which is based on Apache. And it also contains the OC4j components. The OC4j, OC4j components, there are three important components, just similar to what we have seen previously. One is forms and OA core and OAFM. And OA core is responsible for serving all the requests which are related to the HTML based applications, OAF pages and JSP pages. And the OC4J forms is responsible for serving the requests which are related to form server. And the forms app.er application, which contains the eBusiness suite forms, is going to be deployed, will be deployed by default on the OC4J forms. So this concept is exactly the same in base release 12.2 and 12.1 except for, for the fact that it has been deployed on the weblogic managed server that is forms managed server in release 12.2 and in release 12.1 that has been deployed on OC4j forms. So the main difference what you can observe between release 12.2 and 12.1 is the Fusion Mail 11G, Fusion Mail 11G is basically configured to provide the HTTP server and also the weblogic domain having all the three important managed servers. But in release 12.1, we have internet application server, IAS, Oracle application server, 10.1.3 version, which, give, which provides you Apache and OC4J components for forms, OA core and OAFM. Now, there is something called OPMN and the responsibility of OPMN, which is Oracle Process Manager and Notification, 
the responsibility of it is to start and stop all these four components of your middleware or basically your application server. As you can see here, if you run ADOPM and CTL status, you can see that all the four components are basically present here. So one is HTTP server, OE core, forms and OFM. So in the release 12.2, we have seen it basically in the web logic domain console or admin server console and release 12.1, we can see them from basically OPM and status. So this is the main difference between release 12.2 and 12.1. Of course, there are a lot of differences in the file system level, but on the product point of view or in the technology stack point of view, the main difference is in release 12.2, we have Fusion Millville 11G, but in release 12.1, we have Oracle Application Server 10.1.3, which also means there are two versions of IAS in release 12.1, one is 10.1.2 for forms and reports and 10.1.3 for the application server, mainly for serving the web page requests.